What is your name and what brings you to LA? To LA? Uh, my name is Andy, Andy Black, or Andy Beersack. I have a lot of names. Uh, but the reason I'm in Los Angeles is because I live here uh, and have lived here since I was a teenager. And I, I will continue to live here until I don't have to any longer. The next question is, what's your favorite lyric in one of your songs? Um, it's a difficult question to answer, being that I wrote all the lyrics. Uh, most of them are very close to me. So I can't name one specifically, but uh, I like all of the lyrics in the song Homecoming King off of uh, The Shadow Side. Next question is, what's your favorite song right now? My favorite song right now is, uh, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't listen to a great deal of music when I'm not making music. So I guess something that is from the new Black Love Rides record that we've been working on. Uh, last thing that made me laugh, I was asked earlier what uh, my favorite animal is, which I assume I'll probably be asked again at some point today, possibly very soon. But it made me laugh because I hadn't thought of a favorite animal. When you're a kid, I think you tend to have more of a favorite animal, uh, not so much in adulthood. I don't think many adults think all day about their favorite animal in the same way that most grown adults don't think about their favorite dinosaur, uh, whereas most children have that. I do not currently have either a favorite animal or a favorite dinosaur because I feel like that's unfair to all the other animals and dinosaurs. What is my comfort food? Um, I don't know why this is, but... Toast with butter and grapefruit on top of that toast. It's important that it's toast, not just bread. Actual toast with butter and grapefruit. I think that it dates back to... My mom apparently ate it when she was pregnant with me, so I, there's something that is in my subconscious that makes me want to eat that. But it's weird as hell. Uh, but it tastes also weird as hell. I'd like to be able to tell you that it's delicious, but it isn't. Uh, it's just something that I like and makes me feel comfortable. If I wasn't playing music, what would I be doing? I would be answering questions off of an iPad. <laughs> I got a thumbs up, so I'm, I'm moving on. I get to move on to the next level. Live questions. Live questions. Stephanie Roberts says, Hi, Andy. What inspires your songs? Uh, thank you for the question, Stephanie. Uh, first of all, every song is different. What inspires me to write uh, a song about uh, something that is uh, upsetting to me? Obviously, it's a very different emotion or a different instinct than something that makes me write a song about something that makes me feel happy. Um, so, for uh, like my solo record, for the Andy Black record, most of what was driving me to write songs was personal experience that I had within the previous year. Um, but in general, the, the interest in writing songs just came from my interest in having something to say and feeling like, in terms of poetry or, or the, the way that I felt about the world, being able to sing that uh, and, and have people connect with it was a huge inspiration to me. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Amber Boggs says, what is my favorite Batman movie? Uh, I, I have to say, and, and it, I want it to change because I want there to be a better one that is made, but my favorite Batman movie is the 1989 uh, Tim Burton Batman movie with uh, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson. I would love there to be a movie that goes goes beyond that in terms of the visual and everything. But uh, and as someone who's been a fan of Batman my whole life, I've been waiting for that movie to beat that. And while I do enjoy the Christopher Nolan series, I don't think that it has the amount of fun that the '89 movie has. And certainly the aesthetics are much stronger in the '89 movie. So uh, that is a long-winded way of responding to this question. But it is the 1989 Batman. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, Sarah Lowry, hopefully I pronounced that right, and if I didn't, you'll never be able to tell me. Uh, <laughs> would you ever do another Andy Black tour? Uh, yes, I will, is the long and short, and I intend on doing one uh, pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. All right, let's see, what, what else do we got here? We got, when did you get your first tattoo and what was it? I got uh, my first tattoo at 16, I believe, uh, and it was this... Alkaline Trio logo with the skull with, like, kind of swoopy bangs, which uh, inadvertently looks like Hitler. Uh, it was not intentional, clearly. Uh, and I intend to get more hair put on him. I didn't realize that it looked like Hitler until very recently. And to anyone that my tattoo is inadvertently offended, I want to apologize. Uh, I'll just show it up here. Um... I'm sorry for the Hitler hair on the... I didn't mean that to be the way that it went, clearly. Uh, so, I guess I, I've kind of backed myself into a corner. 
Um, but I would like to apologize for my 16-year-old brain thinking that putting bangs on a skull would result in anything other than accidental Hitler. Which, by the way, uh, if you're looking to start a grindcore band, the name <laughs> Accidental Hitler is on the table. So let's move on. What advice would you give to young singers? Um, honestly, as someone who my voice is very, uh, I guess, distinctive or, or it's different, um, and being that I'm a baritone singing a hard rock music most of the time, that's, it's not, there's not a lot of precedent for that. Uh, so for me, it was most, mostly just about finding my own voice and what made me feel most comfortable. Um, don't be afraid to let people tell you you suck and find the thing that makes you feel good about your tone. What team do you think will be the toughest team to beat for Cincy this year? Assumably you're talking about the Bengals. Uh, and I don't, I don't get into that. You have to understand, as a, as a lifelong... I was born and raised in Cincinnati. As a lifelong Cincinnati sports fan, in particular the Bengals, it is not in my best interest to trash talk or even talk about the possible outcome of games, even during the game. The whole idea of being a Cincinnati sports fan is to be as, as non-committal as possible and to only celebrate when the game is over if you have won. Never during the game, because something terrible could and probably will happen during the course of the game. So, just remember... A lot of just generalizations during the game. If you're interested in becoming a Bengals fan, here's some key phrases you can use during the game. Um, anything could happen. This is, in fact, an NFL football game. Don't get too excited. Sit down. Stop clapping. Anything could happen. So that's, I mean, if you were to come to my house on a Sunday and watch a game, there's a lot of misery and stress eating. Uh, and then at the end, sometimes we're happy. And then... We just wait until next week to be upset again. So, uh, uh, though we have had a bunch of great years in a row, I will not comment on your question. I apologize. Uh, and your name was uh, Max Corby. I'm sorry, Max. My apologies. Uh, Sierra Walters says, what would you tell kids who are being bullied? Um, obviously, this is something that I've talked about a lot. Uh, and and I think probably it's it's best for me to not preach to people necessarily about how to deal with things so much as to be able to give uh, my perspective on something like that. Um, and uh, the way that I got through it was simply by feeling like I had something more to, to give in my life than uh, to just be subjugated to being the guy who was bullied or made fun of. Um, I wanted to do something more. And I think finding something that makes you happy, whether it's sports or music or art or whatever it is, something that takes your time away from being bullied and distracts you from the negativity will ultimately become something that's a source of power and strength. So find something that you love that's a healthy alternative to kind of dwelling in the sadness. Uh, what's What else we got here? Daniela Villagrana. How did you meet Juliet? Uh, my wife and I met actually years ago um, through some mutual friends, and we did not like each other that much for a while. And uh, we wound up several years after that. Both of us were single in, in different circumstances in our life. And uh, we met up again on Warp Tour and uh, fell in love there. Okay. Kyle Riopel. Rio. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Kyle. <laughs> I deeply apologize for how badly I butchered your last name. And nothing that I say will ever fix this. Kyle Riopel. I feel like that's right. What's your favorite song on the shadow side? Uh, it changes all the time. Like any record that you make, if you're really proud of it, ultimately you'll, there'll be parts of it that you absolutely love, and then there's other parts that maybe at first you think um, aren't the greatest moments. At least me, I, there's always things that I come back to later and go, wow, I really enjoy that. Um, so, I don't know. I would say that probably currently my favorite song on the shadow side, in terms of what we play live, is Ribcage. Okay. Oh, why did I why did I land on this name? You're gonna do it. Honor Honori Angelica Melton. Hon Honori Honori Honori? I feel like Honori works. Honori <laughs> Angelica Melton. What's your most embarrassing moment on stage? Uh, I, I will answer that question, and also I would say that my most embarrassing moment during this Facebook chat has been pronouncing your name. Uh, or mispronouncing it. My most embarrassing moment on stage could really come anywhere between ages 19 through 24. Uh, 
where I mostly was more drunk than anyone you've ever met during every show that occurred. Uh, I, and most people know that I no longer drink, and that is because I do not remember a great deal of my early 20s. So my most embarrassing moments came from me acting like a fool, but there is one video in particular, if you're interested in looking up my embarrassing moments on the internet, of me uh, almost going to tears, begging the audience to sing along with me. Uh, I believe it was 2009 or 10, and we were in Des Moines. I've seen the video plenty of times. Uh, and I drank a, a fifth of single barrel before I, we went on stage. And I was in such misery that I couldn't go on. And I really needed everyone to sing so that I didn't have to. So in this video, I'm laying on the ground going, Promise me you'll sing. Promise me you'll sing along. And the song was Knives and Pens. And people did sing along. So thank you, BBB Army, for getting me out of that jam. Uh, even at a young age. Let's continue on. Uh, Mini... Mi oh. <laughs> Mini Mina. <laughs> Love it. I like your name quite a bit. Uh, it sounds like a cute and fuzzy animal. Uh, where would you like to go for vacation? I have not been on a vacation since I was a kid. Uh, I tour year-round, usually, so it makes it difficult for me to go on uh, real vacations. So uh, the vacation that I went on as a kid that I really enjoyed the most was uh, my family on my mother's side has a cottage in Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and while that not, is not necessarily a tropical location, it's a nice island uh, in the cold-ass Atlantic Ocean. So I'd like to go there and just relive my six-year-old. I, I remember specifically I had a, a Paul O'Neill jersey. Uh, he played for the Yankees before anyone reading this was born. Um, continuing on with Brandon Schaefer, if you were, if you could do a theme song for any wrestler, who would it be? Brandon, uh, I, I would have to go back to the, my favorite era in wrestling, which is when I was a kid, in particular WCW. I would like to do a song for the, the wrestler Vampiro, uh, from WCW, who was a tag team wrestler with the Misfits. Uh, I was, I thought it would be cool for Blackfell Brides. Or, you know, Andy Black, whatever it is, to do a, a song for him. Continuing on. I, by the way, if you if you guys are looking at the questions here, I'm, I'm not necessarily uh, choosing them. Like, I'm not, th there's no discrimination against the questions. I'm just sort of running my hand around randomly. Uh, so if you see a question that's come up and I'm not answering it, it is, it is not because I'm trying to be mean to you. It is because I am dumb and miss things. <laughs> Matthew Matta. Was recording your solo record more stressful or difficult than recording the BBB? To tell you the truth, uh, it was an incredible amount of fun. Um, I think that the processes are, are very different. When you're recording a record within the context of a band, you have, uh, uh, or at least in, in previous records that we've done, you have a, a sense that you know everyone's doing these different pieces and it's kind of you're building it together. Whereas in the context of a, of a solo record, you're really just um, kind of doing what you want to do every day. Uh, both great experiences, both very different, um, but I have to say I really, really enjoyed the Andy Black record quite a bit. Let's move on. What do we got here? Uh, how far in production are you guys on the BBB album, says Kayla Sh <laughs> Sheerholt. Let's hope. Uh, currently, I would say maybe four or five songs that are, are really ready to be mixed. Um, there's many written, but as far as the recording process, we're about that far. Uh, what else we got here? Okay. I'm just scrolling right now. Not because I think any of them are bad, I'm just curious to go through them. Let's see. If I didn't go into the music industry, what would I be doing? Uh, probably professionally reading questions on a live stream. Uh, and that question came from, by the way, I apologize. This one just says, I have all you songs. Um, thank you for that. Uh, how, Sarah Hengel says, how are my pets? Um, currently, they do not speak English very well, but I would assume, based upon their demeanor, that they seem happy. Uh, my dog is blind, so he doesn't see anything, but uh, he wags his tail happily and my cats are they yell at me a lot really more than anything they're very yelly cats they're talkative and angry about most things but they all seem fine everyone's good everyone at home is good 
Uh, Brittany Kell says, are you dressing up for Halloween? If so, what are you going to be? To tell you the truth, I don't know. Uh, I haven't dressed up in a Halloween costume in a couple years. Uh, or maybe I have. I don't remember. Uh, mostly we play shows on Halloween. So this year I'll be home for Halloween. Uh, or, you know what, I may be in, uh, am I in, am I going to be in Knoxville for Halloween? At the, that convention, Blasco? Uh, no, but right around there. Somewhere around there I will be signing things at a convention. Uh, so I'll be dressed up as a man behind a table with a Sharpie. (laughs) What else we got? Oh, that's my foot. If you're hearing a farting noise, it's not my butt. (laughs) <laughs> okay let's go through I'm scrolling Tim oh damn it I missed it they, oh. Things are going really they're going very fast I'm trying to right. I missed I almost someone named Timory I almost read your question but it's gone <laughs> now so uh, Ollie Bryant Jr. says did you like Pokemon uh when I was a kid, Pokemon was like uh, kind of at the the beginning stages of its popularity uh, with like the cards and the Game Boy game and everything. I never really got into it that much, but I knew a lot of people that did, and uh, I remember the cards. I remember like at one of the like the flaming dragon one was worth more if it was made out of tin foil. Uh, that's all I really know. But I do know that the my my guitar player in Andy Black, who's been on tour with me the last a couple tours is a huge Pokemon Go player and uh, it looks like fun. I don't have it. When we were in Japan on that tour, I saw literally everyone playing it from 900-year-old women to 9-year-old kids. So, uh it seems like a very popular thing. I'll have to get on that. Uh let's see what else. Why didn't I have more Canadian shows says Amy Brown. Amy, just so you know, Before I go, uh, I want to say two things. I will address you personally. I will be doing Canadian shows. So coming up for Andy Black, there will be Canadian shows. So keep your eyes out for that. The other thing I want to say before I go today is that uh, I'm announcing that I'll be doing a talk show with my cousin Joe Flanders. The show is called The Andy Show. And uh, it'll be coming up very soon, so there'll be lots of information. So uh, shortly, uh, there'll be a website up at theandyshow.tv, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We'll have tons of guests, and Joe will just talk shit the whole time. So I hope you enjoy that. That'll be coming up soon, and there's a lot more coming after that, but that's what we got right now. So it was good talking to you guys. I hope you enjoyed my Facebook chat, and uh, now I have to I have to play with all these iPads. <laughs>